Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmi Awashah Bashim Avakak Wadash. And double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, and as well as also giving the salutations they were to the Akim out there that's forwarding this ministry worldwide with the Holy Spirit, which is the one and only true spirit of the Heavenly Father Himself. And Shalom to the brothers, and as well as even the sisters that support what we say and also what we do. All right. It's the brother Laban coming at you with another video. And in this video, I just want to address this news of uh, Kevin Samuels passing away, um, which happened to be somewhat of a big deal to, you know, a lot of, um, you know, men among our people, because uh, this guy was bringing out a lot of truths, which was already spoken of by, you know, many um, so-called uh, black men, have you will which are really Israelites anyway. And the first thing before I speak any further, I just want to read the scriptures in the book of uh, Deuteronomy 28. And we'll begin by reading verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of a foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter. And that's what he was basically bringing about is the fact that, um, you know, women are cruel in the sense of basically ending these relationships and as a result, messing up the children in the means. And then what they'll do is they'll, they'll go about finding another man to raise another man's seed. And this is this is what he was basically bringing about. But like I said, um, if I didn't say it, I'll say it again. Brothers have already been speaking about the woes of, of, of our women. We've already been bringing this out, but he just became more popular. As it reads in um, NBC News, YouTuber with 1.4 million subscribers. You've had people like Tommy Sotomayor, and now you have this individual that comes out and he, and he brings out the same um, um, you know, message towards the brothers and, and, and letting the brothers know that um, these women are, are really the problem. And that's what he would tell these women that would get on his platform and tell them that they're the problem. It was never really mostly the men, not to say that men are not, the, not to say that men don't do no wrong, but more, more often they're the, they're the cause of the problem when it comes to these relationships. And um, basically it's just the curses that Moses or one of the curses that I've just read that Moses was telling the children of Israel that they would um, fall under because they did not continue on with the covenant and keeping the commandments. So when he failed the covenant, therefore, the curses came upon our people as a whole. And now we are experiencing all of these curses. All right. And it's funny because um, a lot of brothers came into the truth. I won't say every single brother, but I'll say a good reasonable amount of us came into the truth because we heard the men that were teaching the truth was reading this and we felt like this was ref referencing our, our life as a nation. All right. And that's really because this refers to us. We are the children of Israel suffering these curses. And one of the curses is the fact that the women of our nation would be cruel towards their husbands and as well as their children. And boy, oh boy, man, is the Negro woman shown cruelty to their children. <laughs> All right. And that's a, that's a video for another time. But uh, like I said, Kevin Samuels was basically saying things that were um, that were said before. And he just was that vessel to bring it forth to light because we're in that time where everything has to be revealed. You know, we're in a time of revelation. And what I mean by that is, is that things have to come to the forefront. Things that are done secretly are going to appear upon the housetops now. All right. Like it's like it reads in the book of um, I think it's in the book of Luke 12 or something like that. I'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture. But you know what I'm talking about. 
And so there you have it. Um, Deuteronomy 30 verse uh, 1. We'll begin right there. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all of the nations whither the Lord thy power have driven thee. And this does not only just apply to the prophets. But as well as even um, other men that have these uh, popular platforms. And they'll speak about the issues as regarding, um, you know, the nation as a whole, or in some cases regarding um, the, the Negro woman, have you will. And um, everybody would watch um, these videos. And they'll see exactly what, what we're experiencing as it is written among the nations. We would, we would call it to mind. All right. But what I also want to pinpoint in this lesson, ultimately, at the end of the day, is that no man is going to come in the midst of among our nation to fix things all around, to have Jake live this um, wonderful standard of, of life and um, the union between the so-called Negro male and, and, and um, you know, the, uh, the Negro woman. That's not going to happen. In this life, everything's going to go wrong for the children of Israel until Yahweh comes back. He's going to be the one to bring everything back the way it's supposed to be. As you have it right here, the title of uh, Deuteronomy 30, Restoration Promised. So it's promised that the nation will be restored, but it ain't going to be by any man among the, the nation of Israel, but by Yahweh Shai, he's going to be the only man that's going to come back and um, kainos everything. In other words, refresh, restore the nation and dead the curse. Verse two. And shall return unto the Lord thy power and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children of all thine heart and of all thy soul. That then the Lord Yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. And I will return and gather thee from all of the nations whither the Lord thy power has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out of, unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy power gather thee. And from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy power will bring thee into a land which thy fathers possessed. And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy power with all thine heart and with all of thy soul that thou mayest live. Excuse me, mayest live. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. So now, as we just read from, what is it, verse 1, how um, the, the curses and as well as the blessings would be called to, to mind, right? Right now, the curses are being called to mind. Not just by the prophets, but also by um, other men among our people that have these, these platforms. Speaking about the issues regarding the nation and as well as um, the Negro woman. Which has basically been the problem of, of the community. Or the so-called community. Which the term community goes back to the word um, Baal. Goes back to the God of Baal. Which is the, uh, the God of the community. So I won't use that term. But anyway, when it's all said and done, when Yahweh Shai comes back, it's going to be called the mind that we're blessed as a nation. When Yahweh Shai makes a second return, he's going to end the curse and begin the blessings. And the world is going to see the blessing of the nation of Israel. Because you got to remember, we came in this particular um, side of the world, the western side of the world, have you will, and everybody knows about how we were basically slaves, and everybody knows about the plight of what's going on among our people today. So when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to end all of that, and everybody's going to know how blessed we are. That's what's next in line. But as I'm going to say again, Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to bring everything back in order. Not a, not a Kevin Samuels, not a Tommy Sotomayor. All they're going to do, these kind of people, is talk, 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 talk. But nothing's going to change much. 
They may change a couple of people there and there, but they're not going to change much as to what's going on with the nation as they expected. Okay. And the thing with Kevin Samuels, if I didn't say it, I, I, I want to just say um, what, what, what I'm, what my opinion is of, of the man. I think that the man have sold out because you don't become prominent in this society on, unless you do that. Especially if you're a so-called um, person of color or anybody. You could be an Edomite, a regular Irish Edomite that happened to be so popular or happened to be a superstar of some sort. Right. In this society, in order for you to get that kind of following as he has, just basically be prominent in general, you have to sell out. I mean, we can look at people like, um, not excuse me, Martin Luther King, make, look at people like Malcolm X and also Marcus Garvey. All of these people were um, were, were um, able to, to get ahead because they went to certain key schools, universities, and from these schools, they were able to join the um the brotherhood have you will so this particular brotherhood paved the way for them to be as prominent as they were and kevin samuels is pretty much no different from the rest of these prominent so-called black leaders anyway all right because when you really think about it you got a lot of youtubers out there that have been saying what kevin's been saying for years and um they have not seen or garnered that much attention like he has so it has, it has it's gotta it's gotta have something to do with him being around the right kind of people for him to be so popular on YouTube like that. I mean, YouTube is a is a governmental website, social media outlet, just like Facebook is. So in order for him to get that push, he would have had to have had links or bumped elbows with people within that realm. Okay, because when you look at um, Great Millstone, beginning with the apostles, as I can remember, um, going all the way back from um, 2007. And I mean, I wasn't in the truth in 2007, but um, I watched the video from um, the apostle or the apostles, excuse me, of, of GMS at that time. And they were on World Star Hip Hop. So automatically... I was I was already interested at the time. I was like, man, where are these guys? But I couldn't find them on on um, YouTube because YouTube was just on on the come up at, at the time. You know, 2007, 2008. And um I couldn't find them. So I just gave, you know, so and I mean, it wasn't just me. It was also my brother, my blood brother. You know, he basically found it first. And uh, me and them wanted to find out who these men were. But we couldn't find it. The spirit had it to where we just said, you know what? Forget about it. But then eventually, um, I would say maybe a year and a half later, I wound up finding these same men that we saw on, on World Star Hip Hop. And ever since that point, I've always known about the Israelites, basically. Which that's a story for that's a story for another moment in time. But um the point that I'm making is, is though, going back to what I was saying, we've been on YouTube for a long time. I mean, another five years, it'd be 20 years since we've been on YouTube. So you would think, OK, YouTube would, would give us some some sort of a push. And even though and I understand why YouTube don't push us because of our content, we're not really going along with the narratives, which Esau has um, pretty much pushed out there. So we're going to get pushback. That's understandable. But what I'm saying is, is we've been making a lot of content for so many years, 15 years to be exact. And again, you would think that YouTube would, would um, you know, give us some kind of a space to where we can receive some reasonable attention, you know, from the people being that we've been on YouTube for a certain amount of years. But then you have an individual like this that just comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden, he's got 1.4 million subscribers, just like that. So that's what makes me believe that the man sold out. But like I said, if I didn't say it, I'll say it again. There was a lot of hand gesturing and stuff like that, which kind of did showcase that he was a part of that brotherhood, you know. And, um, you know, they're saying that he died of a heart attack. 
Or they could have just capped him more than now saying that he died from cocaine and, and stuff like that. Which, I mean, as you know, the article says, reportedly died from cocaine. And let me get into this as well. Kevin Samuels reportedly died from cocaine laced with fentanyl. Um, reportedly died cocaine laced fentanyl as the YouTube sensation passed away with details immediately becoming public. Thursday afternoon, the social media world was hit with some shocking news. Of relationship guru Kevin Samuels had passed away. Uh, Revolt Black News was the first to confirm Mr. Samuels had died, as others outlet revealed it was suffering cardiac arrest. While circumstances of the cause of death were yet to be confirmed by Georgia, excuse me, by Georgia police, popular website Black Enterprise shared some eye-raising news. According to the reports on their websites, Kevin Samuels reportedly died from cocaine. Laced with fentanyl, which is a bit shocking if the final autopsy does come back to be true. So, you know, they're just going through it to see if that is the case. But I wouldn't be surprised. Or as we all shouldn't be surprised. Okay, um, so yeah, let me read this. This is um Lamentations, and this is just in relation to what I read before in Deuteronomy 28 in verse 56. So this is Lamentations 4 verse 3. Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts and they give suck to their young ones. And the daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. And I mean, many can, can, can attest to this. You know, many can contest to their mothers being cruel to them growing up, you know, and, and things of that nature, which is going all the way back to the curses. You know, you're growing up. A lot of us can say that we've grown up with, 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 with pro without proper parenting or um, without a father. And you find out as you as you get older. At first, you know, your mother will brainwash you to hate your father and uh, tell you things like your father ain't shit and, and and all of that stuff, and and give you this one view of your father. And then in the means become cruel to you because you're in a reflection to the man that left her. And um, she basically puts it on you. Her anger is, is geared towards you now, you know. And like I said, um, that's what he also brought to the table more, more on, the, on, the, on the public platform that he had. <sighs> basically exposing, I'm going to just call it how, how it is, man. The nigga woman for the, the wrongs that she's been doing, basically. You know. And as I would say the third time coming, I mean, a lot of you have a lot of um, brothers on YouTube that have said the same thing. People like Tommy Sotomayor have been bringing this out. You know, and, and more in particular, us, the men in this truth, we've been bringing it out. I would say first, if anything else. We were the ones that were really getting on the, the, um, the so-called black women first. And then everybody else started to jump on the bandwagon. And... Um, you know, use what we were saying and they became popular, linked up with particular people to become popular with that same message. So now what I want to end it off is on a positive note. Because at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai, once again, as I'm going to say, which is very important, he's going to be the one to create this world for us and also to restore the entire nation and that is the kingdom of heaven as the title has it new heavens and new earth verse 17 for behold i create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which i create for behold i create jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy Verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. So, Yahweh Shai is going to create, let's look up this word create in the, in the Hebrew, right? In which I create, which is um, bara, or bara ra, which is to create, shape, form, um, fashion, create, always with God as subjects of heaven and earth, individual men of new condition and circumstances of transformations to be created of heavens and earth. Um, 
of birth, something new, of miracle. So let's just deal with this biblical usage and, and this one as well, because that's what the Lord ultimately is going to do. Now, when you read the book of Deuteronomy 30, it actually tells you that on how the Lord, he's going to put it in our hearts to obey his commandments. It was looking directly at me, man. Um, <laughs> Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, boy, me, brothers, this flesh, boy. And the Lord thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That's the, that's the scripture right there. So the Lord is going to create us in, an, in a new fashion. And the fashion is going to be that of us being connected with those commandments. And what I would like to also read is, um, I think it's Isaiah 33, man, if I'm correct. Isaiah 33 and maybe 30, no, it's Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 31. I believe it's 31. Jeremiah 31 and 33. There you go. <coughs> yeah, so this is it right here. We'll begin by reading verse um, 31. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, say the Lord, Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, save the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Save the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their power and they shall be my people. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, save the Lord Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. So this is how the Lord is going to create the new Jerusalem. Let's read this again. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Because the ultimate thing that's going to bring joy to us is by us keeping those commandments. And when we keep those commandments, there's a reward. The blessings. So when a nation is blessed, like we're going to be blessed, that's all we're ever going to do is rejoice. We're never going to meet no bad times. That's going to be a thing of naught. The ups and the down times, that's going to be a thing of naught. That's not going to exist anymore. It ain't going to be a, a, a thing such as a bad day. Because everything is going to be in complete order. Alright? And in verse 34, it tells you that no one's going to teach to their neighbor, know the Lord, know the Lord. Because the Lord is going to be within all of the nation. Alright? And that includes our women being in order. Our women are going to automatically be in order. They're going to be biologically set up. Being that we're going to be biologically set up to honor and, and acknowledge Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as um, the Lord likens his people as his woman, that, deli that delicate, comely woman in the book of Jeremiah 6, if I'm correct. And so shall our women be delicate towards us. The same way we're going to be the Lord's wife. Is the same way our women are going to be our wives. And that's the order. Because the nation of Israel, which, which begins with the men, is the wife of God. And therefore, when the wife of the Heavenly Father is connected with him, therefore our women will be connected with us. So that's the order. So when Yahawashah comes back, he's going to set that order. And when that order is set up, Guess what? Now we ain't got nothing to worry about. This is why it reads also in the book of um, Revelations uh, um, 22. Let me just read that real quick. There's a reason why we have having all of these problems because of us being disobedient to the covenant, not keeping the commandments. So that's why we have to deal with the, the, the black woman's bull, have you will. 
or in some cases they got to deal with our boom. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to read. I think it's verse uh, 21. <laughs> Revelations 23. It's only 22, man. Revelations uh, 21. I think it is. <clears throat> there you have it. Revelations 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heavens and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most side of heaven, prepared as a bride and adorned for her husband. Because the men which will be delivered are going to come back down from the chariots and set the order correctly. Beginning with Yahweh Shai, being that he's going to be the spearheader of the kingdom. Verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, which is also known as the tabernacle of David, is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. So there you have it. So there you have that, that, that nation, which was supposed to be the Lord's wife, the nation of Israel, being in unison with their power through the men. So then in like manner, our wives, our women are going to be in tandem with us. I just wanted to say that again in reading this. Because it really conveys that point. Um, verse 4. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. And neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So all of these complications that we're having as a people. And having men like Kevin Samuels or Tommy Sotomayor come out to, to state the obvious. And to um, hopefully you know, bridge the gap between the two parties, they're not going to be able to do it in this in this time because Yahweh Shah hasn't come back yet. So if Yahweh Shah hasn't come back yet, nothing's going to get fixed. The curses are still going to be on our people lingering. Like that's just how it is. But until Yahweh Shah comes back, then all will be better. So that's all I have to say with, 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 with that being said. Um, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Avakar Kordash. And I just want to say this as well. You know, if Kevin Samuels, if it's official that he did die from cocaine, then he didn't have it all together himself. So he obviously couldn't have been the guy to, to bridge the gap between so-called uh, black men and so-called black women. And I call them black because you have the other half of our people that haven't repented yet. So I'm not going to call them Israelites. You know, which it is official that according to prophecy, that most of our people are not going to survive the holy hell, which is forth to come because they haven't repented. All right. But like I said, he didn't have it. If, if this is the case, which they're going to um, author, which they're going through the authorization of finding out if he did die from cocaine or not. But if it comes out that he did, then he didn't have it all together. And he's not the right guy to bring everything together between the two parties. At all. So um, that's all I got to say. With that, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh, Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bar Hashem, Avakar, Kodash, and Wa, Bar Destruction to this place. Shalom.